In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating super saturated color images. Now, this image I've got right here as our opening example has been treated in the traditional way. That is, we've applied a hue and saturation adjustment layer to bump up the color values. Let's just take a quick look at the values that we've put in here. Uh, I haven't filled with anything except the saturation value. I've just pushed up the saturation slider to a value of 30. And the reason why I've chosen a value of 30, I'm not just choosing arbitrarily, it's because once I push beyond 30, you start to see some rather unfortunate artifacts appear in the colour, in particular around the lip gloss, which has the most intense colour value in the image. Once it gets past about a value of 30, you'll find that it starts to bleed into the other colours, the luminosity toning starts to disappear, and it just goes flat and strange looking. So 30 is about the maximum I can have using hue and saturation. Now there's nothing wrong with the image, it's perfectly good, but if you want to go the extra step in this, there is an alternative. It's to switch colour modes. Now the colour mode we normally use is RGB, that's in the channel palette of red, green and blue. If we switch modes to the lab mode, we get a bit more freedom in treating the colour for this. Now what I'll do is I'll go to Image Duplicate and make a copy of this image. I'll call this Lab Lab Version. And I'll just zoom in. So we've now got our two different versions. And I'll change the image mode from the image menu mode to Lab Color. When you switch the modes, if you've got more than one layer, it's going to ask you if you want to flatten it. So I'll just say OK. And I'll go back to my layers palette, and you'll see that the hue and saturation adjustment layer has been thrown away, and it's back to its original values. I'll just put these two side by side so you can see what's about to happen. OK, now the adjustment I need to make is in the channels area for lab. Lab, unlike RGB, is split up into a lightness channel which holds all of the tone, contrast and luminosity values, and an A and B channel. Now the A and B channel, they hold all of the colour information. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the values of both the A and B channel. How do we do this? Well, as you can see, they are a combination of grayscale elements, so we can use some traditional tools like brightness contrast or even levels if you want to be fancy. I'm just going to use the brightness and contrast tools for this. Now, I would also like to see what the devil I'm doing as we're doing this, so I'll just turn back on the lab combined channel image by clicking on its visibility icon. So now I can work on both the A and B channels and see the results as we work. OK, so we go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. Now, up front, I better tell you I'm using Photoshop CS3. This behaves a little bit different to CS2 and earlier with Brightness and Contrast because the tool is now much more adaptive than it used to be. If I use Legacy, it's now behaving exactly like CS2 and earlier. So if I use the Contrast slider, it's going to blow those colours out pretty quick. Now you can do this of course in CS2 and early if you just take your time and be a little bit careful about choosing the values for both the channels. But in CS3, here's the great thing. With this normal setting for CS3, which is with this box turned off, all you do is just drag contrast all the way up to 100. And it adjusts the effect of the contrast much, much easier. So I'm going to say OK to that. Then I'm going to go to the B channel and I'm going to do it again. Go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. And just drag that contrast all up to plus 100. And say OK. Now the beauty of this method is, if you're using CS3, is it's almost automated because you just drag it up to maximum value and you're guaranteed that everything is going to stay within an acceptable saturation range. Also, if you now compare the two images side by side, you may not be able to see this in this QuickTime film, but do this on your own images. You'll notice that the saturation for the colour is just that little bit stronger, but at the same time there are no bleeding effects, there are no artefacts, and the luminosity toning is just that little bit better. You may say to yourself, well, 
Come on, there's no real big difference. The effect is very subtle, but that is the point. In Photoshop, when you are handling color tones, subtlety is what the game is all about. So if you're trying to achieve maximum saturation values while retaining as high a quality luminosity and toning values as you can, give the lab image, or the lab version I should say, a whirl. Now to finish, we can now switch back by using image mode, put it back to RGB, you retain all of those values and you can now continue working on your image as normal. Hope that was a good one for you.